Since 1938, when the Seal Garner Grant became the first flight attendant for Transcanada Airlines, these women were forced to follow strict rules in order to maintain the company's idealized version of femininity. This trend continued into the 1970s. This is evident when we consider the qualifications required to become a flight attendant, the way she was trained, and the appearance she was asked to maintain on the job. To even pass the application process, candidates had to conform to Air Canada's high standards of physical appearance. A flight attendant could be no taller than 5'7", and no shorter than 5'2". She could weigh no less than 100 pounds, but no more than 130. Her appearance attractive, her personality pleasing and charming. This was just the way it was. She also had to carry a good moral character. An Air Canada recruitment pamphlet from 1971 reads, Your smile must be generous, genuine, and in good working order because you'll be using it often. This was a very narrow category, yet all flight attendants were expected to live up to these standards. Stewardesses who gained any weight would be taken off work without pay until they lost the weight. Listen to us as we perform the recollections of two female flight attendants from, from TCA Air Canada from, 19, from the 1960s as they describe their training in Montreal. First here is Norma G. McNair McNeil. I was brought up in an English-speaking community on the Gaspé coast. At 17, I left to enter nursing in Montreal, where I joined my sisters. I trained at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. After graduation, I became interested in the airline through a volunteer at the hospital. She knew Gordy Kay, chief purser of the TransCanada Airlines, and offered to speak to him if I wanted to become a stewardess. Although I had never set foot in an aircraft, the idea of traveling appealed to me. I accepted her offer, applied to TCA, and was hired. On the training course, there were only two women from Montreal, Mavis Dixon and myself. Those from out of town stayed at the Laurentian Hotel. They had all the fun while we lived at home and came in for classes. Even so, we enjoyed the course very much. Our instructors were Gypsy Germain, Billy Houseman, and Flo Perkins. The dress code was strict. We weren't allowed to color our hair. Girdles had to be worn, as did nylon stockings with seams down the back. It was a running battle to keep straight seams. Hats were worn at all times, including to and from the airport. I thought some of the rules were foolish, but I guess it was important at the time. When the course ended, I was assigned to the Montreal base. The company provided us with French language instruction. I had also taken some classes on my own. When I first began flying, my family was worried about my safety. My mother wondered how they kept those big planes up in the air. I was single, and I had no dependents, so I wasn't worried. The young don't dwell much on danger. Mickey Larson Lightfoot also describes what she learned in training. I've always wanted to fly. I was born in North Gate, Saskatchewan, where I attended classes in a one-room schoolhouse. Every time we had an airplane, we ran to the window and thought, oh, to be up there, flying all day long. My friends and I would visit the Regina Airport, because I'm from Saskatchewan. We like to spend time in the ladies' lounge. One day, a DC-3 taxiing, that's a type of plane, a blonde stewardess wearing a blue summer uniform, oh, it was so beautiful, came into the lounge, touched up her makeup, and returned to the plane. I thought, what glamour. It would be the high point of my life if I could become a stewardess. At that time, I was 13 years old. Later, when I moved to Toronto, I heard that TCA was hiring non-RNs as stewardesses, and I applied, and soon received a letter asking me to report to training school in Montreal. I was so excited. The course was a, a month long, and a John Robert Powers fashion model came into our class and gave us tips on walking, sitting, and makeup. The, ma the makeup part was my favorite part. I enjoyed it because it was more fun than learning how to administer oxygen. And I made a lot of friends. We had a great time. By training flight attendants in this way, what kind of image did Air Canada want to portray of its female employees to the public? What kind of impact do you think this might have had on women's work experiences in Air Canada?